I'm here at the Payload Operations Center at Marshall Space Flight Center. This is the command post for International Space Station Science where they coordinate all the activities. And joining me now is astronaut T.J. Creamer, who you were an astronaut on the space station and now you have a new role here at Marshall. What's that all about? Well, th thanks for asking. This, this is pretty important, actually. Um, as you alluded to, I was spent uh, just, just under six months at the space station. So that brings a whole bunch of training aspects, coordination aspects, operation awareness. and. After I came out of my post-flight PR period, that's when the program was ramping up uh, payload operations because we had constructed space station. We're going to go into the utilization phase now. And I thought at that time it might be a nice marriage of both my interests, my experience, the operational awareness to come to do where the hard work is being done so that it makes the crew's operations easier. And this is the, uh, the place to come and the opportunity to be a payload operations director, to, to train for that, to become one, and to help out in the, the ground coordinations was seemed to me to be paramount for the program. Let's tell folks exactly what a payload operations director does. Well, like, perhaps we can start out with an analogy. If you've seen the uh, movie Apollo 13 with Gene Kranz being the, the flight director for the for the Houston control room, the analog to that flight director is the payload operations director here at Marshall. And the payload operations director becomes the focal point for all the coordinations for the subdisciplines, the people who are working with the racks, doing the computer uh, analysis, the bandwidth analysis, the, the schedule maintenance, the coordinations with the payload developers and the uh, people who are actually needing the data. The, all that gets filtered through and underneath the, uh, the operations, the daily operations of the payload operations director who focuses on the real-time stuff. So TJ, you've been training since September to become certified as a payload operations director. What's, what's been going on? What you been doing? Well, as I've tried to allude, there's many aspects of this job. So as we grow in the programmatic awareness of the job, then we have to get more into the details of each of the positions. The payload rack officer, of course, is looking at the racks of great interest <clears throat> that run the experiments, and we get to learn a little bit about their job, not become the subject matter experts, but at least to be able to be cocktail party fluent in that business so we can have the conversations we need to have. The stowage people, of course, are um, pretty much rule a lot of the logistical portion of our lives on board. In fact, the logistics will, will make the day or break the day largely. Um, the operations controller is our real-time safety officer and, of course, is the second brain power in the room to make sure that one individual brain doesn't go off in the wrong direction. Um, the person who works with all the data flow um, planning and programs and making sure that the communications and the video is all squared away, that's good. And then let's talk simply about individual experiments. Each of the individual experiments gets serviced by um, the available resources on board space station and we have to be able to coordinate with Houston and how is the right way of being able to coordinate with Houston matters about what resources are being used. For that matter, we have exper experiments in international partner modules. So we also have to begin to be able to understand their needs, their constraints, and the way to communicate with them to, in order to make the experiments wherever they're located on a space station viable. <clears throat> to me, it's a win-win situation. You've got someone who's been on orbit, and, and it kind of is conversely. You're learning from them, but they're learning from you too, right? I, I certainly hope so. The, um, the vernacular that you are able to come away with from a space mission certainly helps you with the ability to envision what's going on as you look at the paperwork and the coordinations on the ground. The primary mission here is to make the jobs that we need human hands for in a weightless environment to be most efficient so we can reap the most amount of benefit time-wise as well as in data and, and science results. So <clears throat> where does it go from here? What will be your job after this? After you're certified, what happens? Yeah, you're asking uh, one of those great questions. The training since September has been able to provide me the opportunity to, to train towards certification and if everything goes right then perhaps this time next week we might be um, actually a verifiable certified pod. Um, but then I hope to be able to conti continue to contribute um, with more visits to Marshall, be part of the, the pod rotation, and to be able to help in the joining the two operational communities. To be quite honest with you, I'm in a, in a unique position to be a liaison between the Houston operational community and the, the Marshall payload operations community, and, and be able to liaise between these two communities allows us to be even more efficient and be able to get to understand each other better. And when you're on orbit, you kind of become family with, with the folks down here, right? So I know now, what's it like when you talk to a crew member now and, and they get to hear your voice down here? It, it is actually kind of cute. Um, if I surprise them and take over the comms for whatever reason, it's old home week and, then, and you can hear the smiles and just the voices that come down. On another side though, <clears throat> some of the, the pay comms with whom I spoke with 
while I was up on orbit down here, it's, it's interesting and it's fun to, to joke with me about some of the jokes we had on orbit, or one of the, uh, actually the Eurocom, the, the European PACOM, was one of the PACOMs I had talked to uh, while I was up in orbit and got to talk with her today, and it was nice to hear an old familiar voice and we had shared some old times, I guess I should say. So it's, it's nice to put faces to voices and be able to have a little bit of a shared experience as we go through the operations. Well, I know that they are so lucky to have you and glad to have you here, and thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you very much.